Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. We got an awesome video for you guys today. Today we are going over all the Mimic Book 2, Chapter 2 monster lore that we know of. So here we go. And a massive shout out to Nexus for helping me put this all together. Thank you very much. So the first monster we have is the Ghost Whale. It is a mythical yokai that we saw in the Book 2, Chapter 2 trailer right at the start. It appears to be a skeleton and it does not look like it has one bit of skin or meat on it. It is known that the whale brings a curse to the area where it is spotted. There is actually a very exciting piece of lore that I read off the Wikipedia and here's what it said. Uh, excited by the potential of a catch, the townspeople on the island railed together and took their boats out to hunt it down and catch the whale. And here's where it gets interesting. As soon as they reached the whale, they began hurling their harpoons and spears at it. But no matter how many times they did so, none of the harpoons or spears stuck. That is because the whale is of course a ghost. It also says that the sea began to glimmer with thousands of strange fish and eerie birds, the likes of which they never seen before. And if you're wondering what they're referring to, they're referring to those little things that are coming out of the whales in the chapter 2 trailer, which I'll put up here on screen. And to finish off the story with the villagers, they return home because they are so terrified about what actually happened. Even though the whale was never seen again, the villagers still said that they still felt a curse on the island. A plague started going around and very infectious diseases started to spread, killing many of the villagers. And here are some of the pictures of what the old lore looks like for this creature, the ghost whale. Alright, now we're on to the second monster, one that most of you guys are familiar with because we've already encountered it, Nor Ona, which is the snake lady that we encounter in the second part of Book 2, Chapter 1. So this snake in, has some relevance in the new chapter, Book 2, Chapter 2, because we saw it in the trailer in what looks like a ship battle. Which, the ship battle, I'm also going to make a video on because it has some really cool information and I really do think that we're going to get into like a PvE style ship battle in the Mimic, which I don't think we've ever seen before, unless you include the boss battles. So we don't have too much lore on the Snake Lady, but we do have some uh, appearances to talk about. And a lot of this information is coming from the Wikipedia. So to start off, uh, in her mouth she contains a red forked tongue that flickers in and out once in a while and set of yellowed hideous sharp teeth. So this is a monster that we're going to encounter again in book 2 chapter 2. It's going to be really interesting and it looks like we're going to encounter this monster during the ship battle. I am going to make a full video on that as well because that is some really interesting stuff because it's almost guaranteed that we're going to have a ship battle and they have not even announced it yet. Alright now we're on to our third monster the Amibuzu. The Amibuzu is a monster that we first encountered in the Mimic book 2 chapter 1. We saw this monster appear with his big head right before we hit the last part of the chapter. So some stuff about their characteristics that we found from their uh, Wikipedia. It appears to be a gigantic aquatic humanoid creature with inky black skin and a pair of large glowing white eyes. Now this creature is massive and we can't get an accurate uh, representation of how tall it actually is. But if I had to make a guess it would be somewhere in the range of 100 to 200 feet tall. And another reason between why there is such a big gap between 100 and 200 feet is because we cannot see his full body. We only get the first half of his body that is visible when he pops up over his head. So he could be much taller under the water, or if we had to make a guess, I would say it, I'm still around the range of 100 to 200 feet. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Now, the backstory is a little bit unknown, but we do have some urban legends about this creature, and honestly, it is one of my favorite urban legends I think I've ever heard in the Mimic. So here it is. So according to the real urban legend, Umibuzus are spirits of downed priests cast into the sea by the angry villagers. Now these angry villagers are the same angry villagers that um, were trying to hunt the ghost whale right at the start of the video. So the priests were transformed into Umibuzus due to their horrible deaths. It is also possible that their true origins will remain a mystery. We also have some intel that this monster will not be one that we encounter, just a side character. Alright, the next monster we have is called the Warshipper. So for the Warshipper, we saw this first in the Book 2 Chapter 2 trailer. We have not yet encountered this in the Mimic so far. Also, the Warshipper is not his real name and will most likely be given an actual name when the developers decide to give it a name. 
So the Worshipper is just a temporary one until we get an actual name. So here's the backstory that we have on the Worshipper. So it's also known as the black and white figure. It is the character who first brought Izamu, who is you in the game, the player, to Mio and Rin's place and then jump scares you right after the Snake Lady part when heading to the Yokai Town. Alright, the next boss we have is Ashi Oni. Now an easier name to remember this by, or what I nickname it, is the Spider Monster. We only got about a 5 seconds quick sneak peek at it in the trailer, but this is a very terrifying monster for its origins. So the name literally means Ox Demon. And what this refers to is the number of different monsters with bovine traits. This monster resembles an ox form from the head up and a demonic horn below. We also do know for a fact that this monster will be hostile and will be chasing you as was shown in the trailer. This is most likely going to be the same thing that happened in book 2 chapter 1 where after every part the big monster just starts chasing you and you have to run away. So we're probably only going to encounter this monster for about 10 to 20 seconds during the quick runaway scenes. Alright, the sixth monster we have is called Fudu Mayo. This monster is shown in the first trailer we got for Book 2, Chapter 2. We also saw this monster a bit in the final teaser of Jealousy, Book 2, Chapter 2, which is named Carved on a Steel in Chinese Characters. The name Fudu Mayo means the immovable or unshakable one. So here's some more information that we got off the Wikipedia, which I'm just going to read for you guys. He is one of the five Mayos, or Lords of Light, whose threatening appearance guards the law of Buddhism. He is equipped to guide the spiritual traveler's past temptation on the path of enlightenment. Fudu's bulging eyes, piercing stare, and protruding fangs express the intensity of his wrath against evil. A very interesting monster that we don't know if it's going to be hostile or not, but if we had to guess, we do not think it's going to be hostile and will just be a statue. Alright, for the seventh monster, we got Zahishki. The last part of the name is very complex, and a lot of you guys make fun of me on how I pronounce some of these names, so do you know what? I'm not even going to attempt it because I'm probably going to mess it up. So this monster has the appearance of a young child that brings fortune and protection to the households in which they dwell. And here's some more information on the Wikipedia. So Zahishki are considered guardian spirits of the house and gods of luck. It is said that a house which is a hishiki will prosper and grow rich, and a house that drives away such a spirit will fall into decline and ruin. So the moral of the story is, if this ghost comes into your house, do not wave it away or it will ruin your entire life. And even with that, this monster is known to be one of the nicest monsters that we will encounter in the next chapter, so that is very fun. So yeah, very nice monster if you decide to keep it, but if you don't, it's a very mean monster, so definitely decide to keep this. It will definitely be on your side. Alright, the next monster that we've got is the Skull Monster. So we have seen this monster in a bunch of different places, including the sneak peek section of the Mimic Discord and also the trailer. It is also the monster that we see for the main picture of the Mimic. So this monster, we are unsure if this will be in Book 2, Chapter 2 or in Book 2, Chapter 3. There is no confirmation on that. The only information we got on it is it's got six arms, a skull for its head, and appears to be skinny if you look through the orange rays. Alright, the next monster we got is nicknamed the Goblin Monster. This was the monster I originally thought was a dragon just because of the sneak peek that was sent in the Discord. I made a whole video about that. So here's some information that we got on this monster. So this is one of the monsters that we assume is going to be featured in Chapter 2 or Chapter 3 in Book 2. Its only features is that it now has, and here's the word that I've been trying for about an hour to pronounce, an afro or mentioned mouth, horns, and its eyeless face. Make fun of me in the comments for that word because man, did I ever mess up that word. I just gave up after a while. I'm going to put it up on screen just so you guys know how hard this word is. And the next beast, and how can we forget this one, is Jealousy. So of course, Jealousy is the main antagonist of Book 2, just like Sama was the main antagonist for all of Book 1. 
So here is some of all the information that we got from Jealousy off the Wikipedia. So of course, Jealousy is one of the four beasts. Some is one of the four beasts, if you guys are wondering who some of the four beasts are. It has a transformation ability, as conformed by the lore writer. Jealousy can transform into three different forms at most, usually into animals or their environment. They have Water Raven ability. This is presumably an ability that Jealousy is shown to have. Jealousy is able to stay alive in their seal for hundreds of years under the ocean without drowning. One of their other abilities is Mimicry, which most Mimic monsters have. So this ability is the main ability of the four beasts, including Jealousy. They are able to mimic any part of this reality it wishes and recreate it in their own pocket dimension. Another ability that they have is Immortality, and this is going for one of the other scenes that we said, which was, was Water Briefing. So here's what it says for Immortality. As confirmed by the Lord Riders, the four beasts were created 3,000 years ago. It seems that they are immortal or have an impossible long aging process. This just means the Mimic Monsters cannot die, probably unless they are killed directly. Alright, the next boss we have, monster number 11, is the bald monster, which we have only seen in the new Book 2 Chapter 2 trailer, meaning we have not encountered this monster yet. Also, we can confirm that this monster is humanoid because of its ears. Now we have some more information here, but I'm going to question it a little bit. So next is the person helping me with this video talked about how it can possibly fly because of what we saw in the trailer. But what I think could also be happening is it's completely underwater so it's swimming making it look like it's flying. Because we were underwater for the last part of book 2 chapter 1 and it just completely just looked like we were just running underwater. We couldn't really even see the water. So this part could be underwater and it could be floating down from under the water. Or we could be above water and it could be flying. We have no idea. Alright, the very last monster we have on this list, number 12, is Dark Kenio. Now, this monster, we don't have too much information on it, but it looks like it is related to a lot of the leaks that we saw with the dead cows and their sacrifices. Now, the reason why I say it relates is because in the trailer, it looks like he's eating the cow that's being sacrificed that we saw in two different pictures. But yeah, that's basically all we know about this monster. Thank you all for watching this video, subscribe, like, and turn on those notifications, and check out some of our other videos here. Peace out.